Ban in a Box 2019 for Windows is here. There are over 64 exciting new features and an amazing collection of new content, including new reel tracks with great new funk styles, blues styles, gospel vocal mms, world styles, and lots more real tracks that we'll look at in more detail later. There are new MIDI super tracks. Instrumental studies. There's a new set of Celtic flute artist performances. There are low man and reamped 12 key metal thrash electric guitar reel tracks. Reel drums transcriptions. And more. We also have bonus packs with 40 reel tracks in addition to the 202 new reel tracks. So in total, an amazing 242 new reel tracks are available. In addition, there are over 250 new reel styles that use the new reel tracks. These include styles that use the new blues horn sections. Chicken pick and soloists from Nashville legend Johnny Highland, and many more. Plus, we've made a new Extra Styles Pack 6 with 162 Extra Styles. First off is our brand new 64-bit version of Banana Box, which works with the latest plugins and 64-bit OS features. We include both 64 and 32-bit versions, so users of 32-bit Windows can still run Banana Box 2019. We've also made and include a 64-bit VST plugin of Band in a Box, which you can use inside your favorite DAW, Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, etc., to generate styles, real tracks, real drums, multi-riffs, etc. We have a dedicated plugin video available on our website with great demonstrations in various DAWs, but we'll also check it out in more detail later in this video as well. We include a 64-bit GM MIDI synth with default GM sound font, allowing you to specify any GM sound font, including huge ones larger than 2 gigabytes. There's a completely redesigned song picker which shows information for up to 50,000 songs and has useful filter and search features including search by chord progression and or melodic phrase. We've added advanced filters to help with searches for real tracks, real drums and MIDI super tracks. These include search by feel, time signature, tempo, real charts, and more. You can now control the loudness of each real track in the medley, opening up the possibility of having many great sounding real tracks playing as an ensemble on a single track. Notation enhancements include drum notation, drums real charts with transcriptions of some of the real drums, quick entry of forced accidentals, and more. We've added 300 more song titles to the song titles browser. The Melodist now uses real styles to generate chords and melodies. Audio harmonies are enhanced with the Band in a Box Harmony Engine, providing sophisticated harmonies with passing tones to your audio track. And there are many more great new features. We'll look at some of these features in more detail later, but first we'll check out some of the amazing new real tracks and real drums added in Band in a Box 2018. Right now we're listening to a real style that features some of our exciting new funk real tracks and real drums. If you're new to Ban in a Box, I'll give you a brief introduction. Ban in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that allows you to type in any chord progression in any key, and it generates backing tracks for you. This is an amazing tool for practicing, songwriting, composing, teaching, and music production. And that's what you're hearing right now. Everything you're hearing here was created simply by typing in these chords, picking this style, setting the tempo, and pressing play. Band in a Box then did everything, and you can enter any chord progression in any key. I'll highlight this by making a couple of changes to this chord chart. I'll completely change the chords in the first eight bars.
and I'll change the key of the whole song. And now you can see that it's playing over our new progression in a completely different key, and it still sounds fabulous. So in this video, we're gonna check out the new features in Band in a Box 2019, but first let's have a look at some of the amazing new content in Band in a Box, starting with some of the 202 new reel tracks. The Jazz, Blues, Funk, and Latin collection this year contains an amazing assortment of legendary musicians. We've added more drums and percussion from the great Alex Acuna, well known as the drummer for Weather Report and many other seminal fusion groups. And alongside master guitarist Ramon Stagnero, there are Brazilian bossa and samba styles. As well as many more Latin American styles with real tracks firsts, such as Bajo Sexto, a Mexican stringed instrument. This set also features Alex and Ramon on the requested rumba flamenca styles. We also have new modern funk reel tracks from some of New York's most exciting musicians. Guitarists Bob Lanzetti and Mark Lettieri, drummer Spot Searright, and percussionist Kita Ogawa are all part of some of the most exciting funk and world music projects coming out of New York, and they are now available in a variety of Band in a Box styles. There are new fiery harmonica soloists from L.D. Miller, who won first runner-up on the first season of America's Got Talent with his incredible harmonica performances. We also have wonderful new blues rhythm and soloist guitars from blues master Saul Philcox. We have new funky acoustic guitar styles from Colin Linden and Joe Robinson. There are also new djembe and other percussion styles from master percussionist Keita Ogawa. There are tango styles. Modern jazz waltz drums. And to top it off, we've added to our collection of horn section styles with some great growly blues horns. We also have some beautiful new pop, rock, and world styles. Perennial favorite Brent Mason has recorded some superb new pop soloists on both electric and acoustic guitar. We also have wonderfully spacey, cinematic electric guitar from Darren Favorite. we have lovely new 12-string and 6-string campfire acoustic folk styles. There are new pop rock pedal steel reel tracks with a modern edge from Nashville great Eddie Dunlap.
There's a set of laid-back singer-songwriter guitar and piano. And there are new klezmer and European styles. With Band in a Box 2019, we're introducing an amazing new Real Tracks guitar artist, Johnny Highland, with some stunning chicken picking soloists. We've also expanded our collection of Americana Real Tracks with some of Nashville's top players. Added to our collection of Celtic styles with another real tracks first, Celtic Cellos by Natalie Haas. Also on the Celtic front, we have new 12 string and nylon guitar styles from Quinn Bashan, which utilize another real tracks first, Dad Gad Guitar Tuning. And for the icing on the cake, we've added a new background vocal reel track style with gospel mm's vocals. So now we're going to get into the new features of the program itself. As we saw earlier, the most exciting new development is the 64-bit version of Band in a Box. This is one of the biggest things our users have been asking for. This has the newest features of Band in a Box 2019 and is a modern 64-bit audio app. This means it can use the latest audio drivers and plugins that are designed for the 64-bit audio engine on your Windows OS. We also include a 32-bit version of Band in a Box with similar features. The 64-bit version is named bbw64.exe, and the 32-bit version is named bbw.exe. And you can tell which version you're running by the startup screen or the About Band in a Box dialog. And there's also now a Band in a Box VST DAW plugin included. The Band in a Box VST DAW plugin is separate from the Band in a Box application and works directly inside your DAW, Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, Presonus, etc. The plugin uses the content, real tracks, styles, etc., that are present in your BB folder to generate audio or MIDI tracks that you can drag and drop from the plugin into your DAW. We have separate videos that go into more detail about this amazing new feature, which you can view on our website, pgmusic.com, but I'll demonstrate it a little bit here. I'm going to use it here in Reaper, and I'm going to use it to add tracks to something I've already recorded. So in Reaper, I've got a couple of tracks recorded. The old folk song, O Shenandoah, sung by the very talented Beatrix Mete. Oh, So I'd like to add some Band in a Box tracks to that. So on any of these tracks, I can add the Band in a Box plugin. So now you can see it's already got the correct tempo entered in here. And there are two bars of silence at the beginning of this file. So I'll leave lead in selected. So now I'll just start typing in the chords. C, E minor, F, C, C7. I'll skip ahead in the video until I'm done that. So the whole thing is now typed in. And now, just like in Band in a Box, we can now pick a style. 
So here's the list of all the possible styles we can choose from. And you can see there's over 6,000 to choose from. So the best thing to do is filter. Our song is 87 beats per minute. So I'll filter by a close tempo, 85. And it's even eighths, one and two and three and four and. So I'll filter by that. And I know there are some really cool new Americana styles. So I'll just type in Americana in the text filter as well. And I'll try a few of these out. I really like this one and it was recorded at 70 beats per minute so not too far from 87 so I'll try that one out. So now I can just generate the part. It does take a little while to generate all of these parts so I'll skip ahead just a bit. So now the icons have changed which means these are ready. So you can drag the tracks in separately by dragging these green icons Or you can drag them all at once by dragging the blue master icon. And let's give that a listen. And it sounds great. I'll remove that original scratch guitar track as it now doesn't really fit. But these tracks fit beautifully with the vocals. So let's say that's the state that I left it in last night and today I've reopened the file and I want to do some more work on it. I realize this empty space here could use something, maybe a solo. So I'll go back into that same plugin. Everything has been saved right in the Reaper session. So in this file, it's just these bars that I want to generate, which is those four bars of instrumental break between verses. So if I was actually recording someone doing a guitar solo over this section, I might get them to do several passes and then I could pick the best one or even comp together a part taking elements of the different takes. And with this plugin, we can emulate exactly that with the multi-riff feature. Now this is the real tracks picker, distinct from the style picker we saw earlier in that this is for picking individual instruments rather than full band combos, which are the styles. Now, I know there are some great new Brent Mason acoustic guitar soloists, so that might be perfect for this. So I'll use some of the new filters to just show real tracks recorded by Brent Mason. And I'll add another filter to only show soloists. And I'll also add a text filter, acoustic. And this one is even eights at 65 beats per minute, so that could stretch up to 85. So I'll double click to sample what it sounds like. And I'll pick that one. So it's now the same real track in seven different slots, which is what the multi riff does. If I use the scroll bar to go up, the style tracks are still present here, but this area is reserved for this multi riff feature. Now these four bars are highlighted, but it's actually going to generate a bar before and a bar after as well. The reason for this is that there's often a pickup leading into a bar, particularly with soloists, and this ensures that that won't be cut off. And same goes with the last bar. We don't want to cut off a phrase that has trailed off past the bar line. So now under generate, I'll go custom and generate all riffs in the multi riff area. And I'll skip ahead in the video again. So those are done now, and like before, I can grab the blue icon and drag that into the DAW. And now I'll close the plugin and check out the parts. So I'll mute all except the top one to start.
So, pretty happy with the first one. Second one, maybe a little too bluesy for what I want here. Plus, I like that the first one started earlier. Third one is nice. I like that ending that it trails off a bit more before the vocals are back in. So without even continuing on, my choice probably would be to keep the first take up to bar 15 beat 3 and then move over that portion from the third take. So we'll listen to that. I'd say, yeah, I'll keep that. Check out the dedicated plugin videos for some of the other options and an even more in depth look at the plugin in general being used in a variety of different DAWs and utilizing all the various options. The Song Picker has been completely redesigned with many very useful new features. It can show information for up to 50,000 songs and allows you to quickly filter and select songs. You can also search songs that have similar chord progressions or melody fragments. You can enter the Song Picker by either pressing the large Song button on the large toolbar or pressing the button with two small notes on the small toolbar. Or you can use a new shortcut, typing S, S, enter, as if you were typing a chord. By default, the song picker shows songs in the home folder, which is CBB songs. With the new install of Band in a Box 2019, this songs folder is created and is likely empty, but is intended for you to put any of your own songs in, as many subfolders as you like, as kind of a home base for your own song collection. But of course, you can also choose any other folder you want to be your home folder. For myself, you can see that I've started adding my own songs to various subfolders within the main BB Songs folder. Some in a Jazz Tunes subfolder, some in a Pop Tunes subfolder, and some in a Song Ideas folder, which is where I keep little song fragments that I'm working on, but don't have titles yet. Now, the home folder is what you've currently set as the folder you always want to open this dialog to, but you can easily look in other folders as well. For example, I'll choose the Instrumental Studies folder. So now I see the whole list of all Instrumental Studies. If this was my first time here, it would have asked me to build the list, but since I've been here before, it comes up right away. So you can see this is the folder we're currently looking in, but it's not the home folder, which means that if I close this and open it again, it will open again to my home folder, CBB Songs. But if I'm going to be spending some time here checking these studies out, I can easily make it my home folder by pressing this button. But then later I can easily change it back to BB Songs. So now I'll check out some of the newer instrumental studies. Maybe this wacky country double stop bends. And I'll play a bit. These studies are really cool, taking a short guitar riff and looping it, but having it played over a variety of different progressions. The idea being you could learn the riff with the looping, but also start to develop a sense of different ways you could use the riff. And I'll check out this one, Off the Beat Blues Tones. One thing you'll notice is that any songs you click on displays the chords from that song here. For example, these instrumental studies you can see are all short little progressions, and these ones are longer ones. This is great information to have at your fingertips. The new filters here are incredibly useful. For example, we could narrow this list to show only country studies that are even 16ths based. 
I'm now going to demonstrate another really cool new feature, searching by song fragment. So I vaguely remember a while back coming up with a melody idea, and I can remember the first part of the melody, but I have no idea which of my files it's in, what key it's in, or anything else about it. So what I'm going to do is enter the melody in notation here, just in the key of C, and then I'll use the search melody fragment feature in the song picker to see if I can find it. So I'll start entering the notes. And I'm going to enter them using a great new notation feature, easy entering of notation with the N key. With this, I can use the left and right arrows to move this yellow line, and then just type N to enter a note, and use the up-down arrows to set the pitch of the note. So I entered a G here. I'll type N to enter a note here and change it to an F sharp using the down key. Move right, press N again. Make it a G. Type N again, and I'll make it a C. And I think it was just a short fragment like that, so I entered a rest here. So that's it. Let me just play a little bit of that so I can hear what that sounds like. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that was it. I don't even remember if that's the right key, but I know I came up with something that started like that. So now I can go back to the song picker. I've now made my BB Songs folder my home folder again, and I'll filter by Songs Matching Melody. It's automatically inserted the notes I just entered, G, F sharp, G, C. I don't want to match the key, because as I've said, I don't remember that. I do want the notes to be in order, because I do remember that. But the octave doesn't matter. I entered this on the melody track in that little sample. So it looks like it's found a song for me, just called Folk Pop Melody Fragment. It looks like it's in the key of F, 82 beats per minute, so I'll check that out. And that's exactly what I was looking for. I guessed the key wrong, but it didn't matter, it found my file anyway. You can also search for chord progressions in a similar manner. For this, I'll just type in three bars of chords, C, C7, F. And again, I won't specify that I want a particular key. So it looks like it actually found four different songs with this progression. So let's check out a couple of them. So the first one here, See You Soon. Uh, at the bottom it shows you the list is filtered by this chord progression. That's the progression that I entered. And then it shows you that two sections of the song match this chord progression at bars 1 and 17. So at bar 1, C major 7 is a variation of C major. C9 is a variation of C7. And F major 7, of course, is a variation on F. So this is a match. And at bar 17, it looks like exactly the same progression. So that's great. Even though it's not an exact match, this is definitely what I had in mind. Let's check out another one here. So Gimme 5 here is in the key of F. And again, we filtered by this progression. And it found one part of the file that matched that progression starting at bar 9. So let's skip down to bar 9. So it looks like F, F7, B flat. So basically, in the key of C, this is the one chord, the one dominant chord, and then the four chord. And in the key of F, it's done the same thing here. F, F7, B flat. So this is an exact match, just in a different key, transposed. Now, I'll just show you a few other things with the filters as well. There's a subfolders filter here that can show you, as long as there's not too many subfolders within your current list, it shows you those subfilters. So I can select, for example, just my song ideas or just my pop tunes, etc. If, however, I'm looking at a folder that has a lot of subfolders, so right now I'm in just CBB, which has a ton of subfolders, if I now go into this filter, it doesn't show me the individual subfilters because there's 657 of them. However, I can select this. And now from this list, I do see all 657 of those, and I can pick the ones that I want to check out. In addition to those filters, there are also filters to show time signatures of just 4-4 four, four, or just 3-4. And there's also filters where you can choose songs with melodies, songs with something on the soloist track, lyrics in certain keys, within a tempo range, or even from specific years. 
There are also easy ways to get around to different folders, particularly with Choose a Previous Song List. Now these are all song lists that I've chosen recently, and so I can easily go from my Songs folder to Songs and Lessons that has the instrumental studies and 101 riffs and all kinds of files like that. Or I can go to my Demos folder, which has all of the new Real Tracks demos. And then in this area here, there's the Open Special area, which just has different ways of actually opening files, favorite files, favorite folders, etc. The Rebuild button, if you've made changes to the folder you're currently looking in, will rebuild that, add new files, or make whatever changes you've made to the files. And the Action menu also has options for song pickers, which enables you to change the font size. So if you want it to appear larger, you can do so. A useful filter button with the hashtag number sign has been added in the Real Tracks Picker, Real Drums Picker, Best Real Tracks, and MIDI Super Tracks Picker dialogs. They allow you to filter the list by many elements, including the type, soloist, background, or chording. This one doesn't apply to Real Drums, of course. Feel, even, swing, eighths or sixteenths. Time signature. Real Tracks or MIDI Super Tracks numbers in a range set numbers in a range, tempos in a range, real tracks with direct input available for guitars and basses, simpler versions, real tracks and real drums with real charts available, high Q or high quality notation available for real tracks, for example, guitar transcriptions with bends, hammer-ons, etc. Real tracks that were recorded in all 12 keys, real tracks or real drums with video available, Real Tracks, MIDI Super Tracks, or Real Drums Artists, or the main genre of the music, jazz, pop, or country. We saw this new advanced filter a bit in the plug-in portion of the video earlier, but let's try it again here in the Real Tracks picker. We'll filter by Real Tracks artist Oliver Gannon. So these 93 Real Tracks are all of the Real Tracks recorded by Oliver Gannon. Then we'll filter by Swing 8s, which narrows the list further, down to 70 items. And I'll type in ballad in the text portion of the filter. And these 18 items are remaining. And I could double click on any item to sample what it will sound like, either solo, or in the context of a band. And it works the same way in the Real Drums Picker. Here let's filter by Real Drums Artist Alex Acuna. And then I'll add a text filter, Perk, to see just styles with percussion included in them. I'll also use another filter which will lead into another new feature, Real Drums Transcriptions. All of these Real Drums now have transcriptions available on at least one of their variations. So let's have a look at one of them, Funk Half Note Pulse Tambo. And I'll load a song demo for it. And we can see that the percussion has been added to the lower staff with the 16th note tambourine showing up there. And the kit is up top, with this guide showing you where the kick, snare, and hi-hat notes are located. So we saw those 21 real drums all have real charts available. All MIDI styles also have real drums charts available. This Westwood style is one of the new styles from the two Look Ma All MIDI style sets, and you can see that the entire drum and percussion part displays in notation.
and drum notation is also available as a new track type on the Melody and Soloist tracks. This means the user can now enter drum notation as well. Once the track is set, you can right-click to enter drum notes from a list, or you can just add notes the usual way by clicking on the staff, using the legend at the left as a guide. For example, I'll enter a typical rock groove by putting eighth notes on the ride. Or we saw earlier that you could add single notes by just typing N and using the arrows, so I'll finish off the ride part like that. Kick on one, and of two, and three. And again, you can tell by looking at the guide that kick is on this space. Snare on two and four. And I'll put a clave rhythm on the cowbell as well. And there you have it. Another new notation feature is the ability to start playback anywhere in the bar by just double clicking on the timeline, whereas previously playback would always start at the beginning of the bar. Another new notation feature is that you can change the beat resolution from within the right click menu. So for example, I'll delete some of the notes at beat four, and then I'll change the resolution of beat four to five. So there are now five vertical lines instead of four and I'll enter five tom notes on each of those for a fill leading to a crash. Another new feature is that for entering notes on lines, in previous versions, if you wanted to put a note on a line, you had to almost be exactly on the line. Now, if you're not quite on the line, a little above or below, but close, it puts the note on the line. So let's listen to that now. Some other notation improvements include an asterisk on the clef split point if C5 is selected, indicating that that's middle C, as well as spin controls to change the value. You can now force an accidental from the right-click menu, whereas previously you could only do so from the note edit dialog, saving an unneeded step. You can edit any track in the event list, whereas previously you could only edit the melody or soloist track. So here you see I'm editing the piano track. And as we saw earlier, there's a new keystroke note entry mode, where you can enter monophonic melodies very easily with just the N key and the up, down, left, right arrows. You can use the left, right arrows to move the yellow timeline indicator, type N where you want to enter a note, and use the up, down arrows to change the pitch. And there's a new button to quickly print a chords only fake sheet. Also, the plus minus buttons on the notation screen have been there a long time to change notation size. But now if you hold control while you click those, the size changes in smaller increments. So you can fine tune exactly how large you want the notation to appear. There are new style maker enhancements. For starters, a MIDI velocity offset is now available. This allows you to make styles with altered loudness for MIDI tracks. For example, if you want the MIDI strings track louder, in the Style Maker, press the Miscellaneous button to open the Miscellaneous Style Settings dialog, and then press the More button. Then in the More Settings dialog, select the strings track, enable MIDI Velocity Changes supported, and enter a value of velocity change from negative 127 to 127. Styles can also be saved with information like a memo, examples, genres, and more. To add information to the style you're making, press the miscellaneous button in the style maker and then style memos, etc. Then you have to enable extra settings for this style, and then you can enter a memo, examples, feel, genres, etc. You can import information from the current style or other styles. This is useful when you're making a similar style. For example, if you're making a country style and want to import information from another country style, Press the Import from Style button and select a style in the Style Picker. This will enter all the information from the selected style to the style you're making. You can then make your own additions and changes and save the style. To then see those changes in the Style Picker, press the Rebuild button with the Slow option, and when that's finished, you'll see your changes updated in the Style Picker. 
Another new feature is that styles can be made using the medley feature, which opens up the possibility of a style having a huge number of real tracks, theoretically up to 70, because each track can potentially have a medley of 10 instruments playing simultaneously. We do have several examples of styles that use the new medley feature, including the one we're listening to right now, Pleadin. If we examine the style in the style maker, we can see that on the track with the vocals, we have four separate vocal reel tracks all playing simultaneously. You'll also notice another new feature, the ability to have different decibel offsets on the medley. This makes it much easier to balance the different reel tracks that are being put together on this one track. That feature is not just in the style, but is also available to medleys made in the reel tracks picker and medleys made as dedicated reel tracks entries as well. There are new song titles browser enhancements. We've added 300 more song titles, including requests from users, so there are now over 10,600 titles. I should mention that the song titles browser provides tempo and style information, not the chords or melodies to the song, but that makes it a great tool for narrowing down your search for band in a box styles. A new chord density filter is available in the other menu. What that means is that if you want to narrow your list to show songs where the chords change frequently, set it to show songs with chord changing every one to four beats. If you want to narrow your list to show songs where the chords change infrequently, set it to show songs with chords changing every 17 to 99 beats, or options in between. Similar to that is chord complexity, with one meaning simple with few chord changes, and nine or higher means complex with many chord changes. The Melodist now uses real styles instead of MIDI styles to generate songs. The Melodist is an amazing feature that's been around for years, and the feature can create unique songs, both chords and melodies. In the past, though, it would create songs with band styles that were all MIDI, but this new feature opens up the options to pair the various Melodist options with real styles, styles that use real tracks. So for example, if I pick Melodist number 47, Samba Fast 64 Bar Vibes, it will, by default, pair it with this real style. Another new feature is more extreme transpositions on some real tracks. This is an internal feature, but has made it possible for us to create exciting new reamped 12 key metal and thrash electric guitar styles, as well as these new, very popular low man styles. Emulating the practice of tuning electric guitars very low to get that great growly sound. We've also added a whole bunch of new hotkeys. These are the types of hotkeys that work like entering chords, but have different functions than actually entering chords. For example, the first one in the list, S, to open the style picker, is one that's been around a while. But following it with a number now gives you great different style options. So for example, if I type S9 enter, as if I were typing a chord, that loads the demo song for the current style. RT5 opens the Select Best Soloist Real Tracks dialog. And this is a great list in the upgrade manual that you can reference. Of course, it would be difficult to memorize this entire thing, but different people have different functions that they use a lot. So if there's a particular item or two in this list that you use all the time, that would be a great one to learn. Incidentally, the music that was playing in the background here is one of the most popular songs from our new artist performance set, which features Celtic flute performances by Jeff Kelly, here duetting with fiddler Daniel Lapp. And they're backed up with reel tracks that includes one of the new Celtic cello reel tracks by Natalie Haas. The Audio Harmonies feature that was introduced last year now uses the Band in a Box Harmony engine when you select the voices above and below. 
the upshot of this is that when using this feature, the harmonies are simply going to sound way better. Now the idea with this is that if you have recorded your own monophonic voice or instrument onto the audio track in Van in a Box, you can use the feature to add audio harmonies to the track. That being said, we have included two practice files that you can use to experiment with this cool feature, and they're located in C, BB, Documentation, Tutorials, Tutorial BB 2019. The vocal mms file is the easier of the two to work with, so we'll start with that. This is a short, simple progression, and the audio track contains a monophonic vocal part. It's actually two voices doubled, but they're singing exactly the same note, so that still makes it essentially a monophonic part, which is required for this feature. Two different notes at once is referred to as polyphonic, which does not work with the feature. So we can add a harmony part to this entire thing, and it will use the harmony engine built into Band in a Box, basing the part on the chords that are entered into Band in a Box. We'll select Whole and go to Edit, Harmonize. We'll use two harmony voices, and one will be above, meaning the second will be below. We could mix them if we wanted, but I'll just leave the mix as is. And with the harmonies added by the Band in a Box Harmony Engine, it sounds great. Now the other file that's included is a Brent Mason acoustic guitar solo, and I'll play a bit of it for you. Now this one is mostly monophonic, but he plays two notes at once in some places. So with this one, you wouldn't just select the whole track, you'd maybe pick a few places to add some tasteful harmony passages, and only places where he isn't already playing more than one note at a time. That's why this one I'd consider to be a bit more advanced, as it requires some actual artistic choices for you to make. So if I start listening through, I like the first phrase exactly as it is. And the second one, maybe just the second half, could get some harmonies added. Maybe for this one, I will mix the new harmony voice a little bit lower. Yeah, and I like that. I'll play through some more. Maybe that whole thing from bar 8 to 10. On second thought, after listening to it, maybe I'll undo that with Control Z. And just do the last half of that one as well. So we've added a few subtle harmonies to this. Let's listen through from the top. Yeah, and that's a nice unobtrusive addition and fun to do. I hope you enjoy all of the fantastic new features in Banana Box 2019 for Windows. Thanks for watching and have fun.